Welcome to World War II Solitaire Board Game Channel and my first playthrough video of Silent Victory US subs in the Pacific 1941 to 45. This is the second game in the Hunter series or the sub series by Mr. Gregory Smith, who's also designed the Hunters, the Hunted, and Beneath the Med. Uh, and I'm gonna start off by playing a campaign with the Porpoise class submarine. Uh, I have already named him his or my sub. My sub is named Polak or Polak, whatever. I guess that's a kind of cod, I think it is. Uh, it's a Porpoise class ship. Uh, our captain is named Niemi. And we are starting in rank one. If you know how to play the hunters, you know that in the hunters, depending on what year you start, you might roll to see what kind of rank you are. But in this game, you will always start as rank number one. Uh, your crew will start trained as they are here. Uh, and this. Uh, specific submarine has four forward torpedo tubes and two aft torpedo tubes. I have eight reloads uh, in my forward tubes and two reloads for my aft tubes. I only have steamed torpedoes at this time. Uh, we can see here on our uh, torpedo load uh, screen or part of the mat that in September 43 we will have four electrical torpedoes and in July 44 we're gonna have eight electric torpedoes so our uh, initial uh, ammunition setup is gonna change as we progress through the game. We also have a three inch deck gun with five rounds of ammunition or five loads of ammunition. We have our marker for hull damage and flooding and we have our a little counter for our purpose uh, submarine. On top of that we do also have a 50 cal uh, anti-aircraft machine gun. So uh, the purpose is a little bit special because basically 904 boats they uh, start automatically in Pearl Harbor but the purpose will roll to see where it will start. Uh, or it's gonna roll a d10 and basically on a 1 to 7 he's gonna start on a mission in the Philippines a rescue mission uh, or evacuation mission or on a roll of 8, 9 or 0 he's gonna start in Pearl Harbor so let's see where we start we rolled a 5 so our crew is gonna start on a mission uh, evacuation mission in the Philippines. So I'm gonna note that here on my uh, log sheet. And if you have played the Hunters or watched my Hunters video, uh, you might have seen uh, one of the spy missions where you have to uh, bring a spy to um, uh, to Ireland or England. Uh, this is kind of like the opposite. You would go and pick up the uh, or uh, leave the enemy there but here you will pick up the passenger and you have to keep the passenger alive and uninjured. I believe he can get uh, uh, lightly wounded but if he would get uh, heavily wounded or seriously wounded uh, or killed in action you will lose this mission. So my mission now on my Philippine rescue mission is to um, is to uh, keep this guy alive. So since I'm in the Philippines that also means that my base now is gonna be Australia instead of um, the uh, Pearl Harbor. So I'm, that means I'm on the mission now and I'm heading back to my base in Australia. So it's a little bit special this uh, first mission. Uh, again, you're starting on an evacuation mission and you will start in the fourth box of the Philippines. So you won't have to do the first two transit boxes and you won't have to roll for the mission box. Okay, so we are uh, on our mission again and we're gonna go ahead and roll and check our chart what happens. And to do that, we are gonna go ahead and roll 2d6. 
I'm just gonna put my dice tower over here and we are gonna look at the result here on our chart to see what happens for our first box and I have the wrong chart here but now I have the right one so we roll a 12 uh, a 12 if you look here on your uh, encounter chart uh, the 12 has a small one and if we go, go and read on the first one it says the first natural 12 encounter rolls 6 plus 6 during a patrol results in a random event ignore the encounter result and roll for the random event okay so that uh, forces us to go to our random event sorry about the focus uh, random event chart so again we're gonna roll 2d6 to see uh, what kind of random event we get and we roll six so uh, that's could be good for us Ep appendicitis uh, a crewman needs emergency surgery roll 1d6 one to three successful and pharmacist mates become expert Four to five, patient survives. Six, patient dies. Remove pharmacist mate expert marker if present. So let's hope for a one to three here, guys. And I roll a four, unfortunately. So that means the patient, I guess the patient survives. Yeah, the patient survives, but nothing happens. Okay, so that means we're going to go ahead and go on and move up to our next uh, box. Um, do you see that the next box has an X2 and that means we're gonna go ahead and roll two times so I'll keep a black dice here doesn't matter the color of the dice I'll keep a D6 just to remember how many times I rolled for this uh, specific box because you can kind of lose track of it if you uh, encounter a lot of ships okay rolling for the first one and we get an 8 so let's check our encounter chart for the Philippines and we can see here that an 8 is unfortunately nothing so we're gonna go ahead and increase this d6 to a 2 indicating it's our second time rolling for this box and roll again and this time we roll a 7 so a 7 should be better let's see Philippines we encounter a ship plus an escort that's cool Okay, so now that we encounter a ship, there are a few things we have to roll for. First of all, we are going to have to roll for what kind of ship we meet. And I'll, uh, one to three, that's going to be a small ship. Uh, if we would have rolled a five or a six, it would have been a large target. So we've identified there is going to be a small ship. And now what we need to do is roll a D100 and a D6 to identify the specific target. And we don't have a D100 obviously, but we have two different color D10s. So one is going to be the first number and one is going to be the second number. So uh, the black one is going to be representing the 10s and the white one the 1. So this would be 42 for example. And then uh, on the chart we have our uh, target charts here and basically they go from A to B to C. So the D6 is going to determine if we see our roster A or if we pick from roster B or C. So let's get going. Let's roll these three dice. And we are, we roll the one. Uh, 14 so it's gonna be small uh, freighter target roster A and it's gonna be 17 so we have found F Fukusei Maru and I can tell you right now that this guy has an escort ship it's a small target it's the beginning of the war and our torpedoes aren't very effective at this stage of the war so I'm not gonna bother I'm not gonna encounter um, I'm not gonna encounter that ship or engage that ship i'm gonna let them go uh, i have a passenger and as long as i keep him uh, in good condition this mission is gonna be a success and i don't have to worry about failing this mission so we move on to the next box of the philippines and go ahead and roll 2d6 again and we roll a seven and that's what we rolled last time you remember is a ship plus an escort 
So again, we're gonna go ahead and roll to see what kind of ship we uh, spot. Again, it's gonna be a small ship, unfortunately, and probably we are not gonna engage it. We're looking again at target roster A, and we're all a 53. So let's see, 53, yeah, it's still not a very good target here. Only 3,200 ton, so I'm gonna be a chicken and I'm not gonna engage, I'm just gonna keep on moving. Rolling now again 2d6 for the last travel box of the Philippines. And I roll an 8, and if you remember, 8 was nothing, unfortunately, in the Philippines. Nothing. So that means uh, I haven't been able to sink, I won't be able to sink. We're now in the transit box, and that works just like the regular boxes. And I roll a 5. And the, in the transit box, uh, a 2 would be an aircraft, and a 12 would be a random event, and once you have a had a random event happen, they cannot happen again during that patrol, so you're gonna engage a ship instead. So we roll a 5, so no aircraft or ship, and we roll again, once we uh, advanced our submarine, and we roll a 7. So again, the 7 is, we're safe, uh, nothing happens in transit except on 2 or 12, and that means we have successfully made it back to base and we have delivered our passengers, which uh, seem to be some uh, marine soldiers. And that means we've successfully managed to um, uh, complete this mission. So it's a complete uh, completed mission. And uh, even though we didn't sink any ships, we completed our uh, rescue mission or evacuation mission. So we're back in the base and we're gonna put a P uh, under our patrol because in the Hunters uh, you would go normally patrol for a month longer if you had the long distance boats and this is how it worked with the US subs that they would usually patrol for a duration of two months. So you put your patrol, you put your uh, P under and under your P you're gonna put your R for refit. So. The standard refit is just like in the Hunters, it's one month if I would have had some damage to my submarines, some hull damage or some specific uh, equipment damage, I could uh, have more than one month of refit, but this time we only have one month of refit. So uh, we're now in March 1942 and we're gonna go ahead and see what our next assignment is. Uh, again we have a chart that we will tell us uh, where we're gonna go and the patrol assignment chart this is for Pearl Harbor boats so that would be wrong since we're in currently in the uh, in, in Australia okay so uh, we're in again we're in uh, March 1942 so this is gonna be the chart that we roll uh, 2d6 on so let's bring back the dice tower and we roll a 2. And that means that we're going to the Solomon Islands. So the Solomons. So we'll simply put Solomons here. And we will take our little patrol marker and <clears throat> go to the Solomons and put him in the first transit box. And it's time to start rolling again, guys. So you remember the transit boxes, it would only happen something if I roll a 2 or a 12. So I don't roll a 2 or a 12, we move on to the second transit box. I hope this dice tower is making less noise than the wooden one I had. I know I got some complaints on that. And we roll an 8. So nothing happens during our first two transit boxes. Now we're gonna roll on the Solomon's encounter chart. And we'll take a look here. On a 2 we would get a capital ship. Uh, and we see we have some different targets. Um, not very good targets. There's no unescorted ships here. Uh, we even have a warship possibility. So that's not very good. Uh, but we'll see what happens. So for our first travel box we roll a 7. 
and a seven in the Solomons is sorry about the focus on this guy. Seven is nothing, unfortunately, in the Solomons. So we'll advance our submarine and roll again. And we roll a seven again. So again, seven would be nothing. So we advance. And again, we enter one of these boxes with the X2 in it, meaning we're going to roll two times. So we'll use a D6 just to keep track of how many times we rolled on that specific travel box. And this time we roll a five. So let's look at this, let's see what five means. Five means nothing. We have the SJ radar. Uh, if we had the SJ, SJ radar now, we could have used that to roll again, but we don't. Uh, the SG radar will be available, let's see, in January 1942. We can see that on our log sheet. So, we move on to the second roll uh, for this box. And we roll a 7 again. And you remember guys, 7 in the Solomons is nothing. So we move on to the next travel box. And we roll an 8 this time. And in the Solomons also, wow, this is an uneventful patrol because in the Solomons 8 is also nothing. So I really need a ship now because this is the last travel box of the Solomons. And if I don't get a ship, I'm going to fail this mission. And a roll of 10. Let's see, guys. I don't know what it is. A 10 is also nothing. So unfortunately, guys, this mission is a failure. Uh, we go to our first transit box. Nothing happens. Next one. Ooh, we roll a 2. And that's going to be an aircraft, guys. So we have uh, an aircraft uh, chart which tells us what happens. Basically, we have a chance to crash dive. Give me a moment to find it. There we go. Uh, we look at our aircraft encounter chart. And basically, uh, I need a five or more to be able to successfully crash dive, uh, leading to no air attack. We have a few die roll modifiers here. Uh, for, first of all, we have a minus one because we have a porpoise uh, class um, submarine. But then, uh, let's see, we're in 1942, so there's no modifier for that. So basically what we have is um, a minus one to our die roll modifier. And we need to roll a five or higher to successfully escape this airplane. So let's hope we need a, uh, let's hope we roll a six or higher. Okay, we'll roll a seven. That's going to be a six with the negative die roll modifier. Uh, that means we made it out alive. Okay, so we're back to Australia, but we still haven't been able to sink any ships. So this is going to be a failed mission. So I'm going to mark with an F instead of an S. That's going to have some consequences for us in the future. So again, we mark with a P under our patrol assignment because we have been on patrol for two months. And then we mark with an R indicating one month of refit. Again, we have no damage to our submarine, uh, either to the hull or any specific equipment. So we're good to go. Uh, okay, uh, we are going to go ahead and go again. Uh, and also with the failed missions, I, be, I think it's two or three failed missions and you're uh, game over. Because basically HQ uh, calls, you, uh, calls you back. Uh, and we're gonna go ahead and roll again on our 942 assignment chart to see what our next mission is. We roll a 7. So if we look at our assignment chart here, a 7 is gonna be the Philippines. So we're going back to the Philippines. And we go ahead and see if I can get the camera to focus. Mark up our uh, log sheet. And let's go rolling. Okay, so we use our uh, sub uh, counter and move it to the Philippines. And we roll for transit. And you remember, guys, only 2 or 12, something happens. We roll an 8, so that's nothing. And we roll an 8 again, that's nothing. So we enter our first Philippines. Uh, 
uh, box and we roll a uh, 2d6 again to see what we encounter and we roll a 12 again and I'm sure you guys remember 12 is a random event so we just re-roll those 2d6 and this time we roll a 9 oh that doesn't sound good pooped uh, your boat has been swept by a large wave uh, with tons of seawater pouring down the hatch and almost sinking the boat SG and SJ systems are now damaged. Roll to repair. Roll for one crew injury. Okay, so the S SJ, I believe I still don't have that. Uh, because you only have that after... Whoops. You can see here, uh, July 1942. I don't know. I think that's a wrong information. I think actually the SJ is available from... Uh, you'll see here January uh, or June 42. Okay, so that is actually correct. And we are now in, yeah, we are in June 42. That's very strange. Let's see. Sorry, guys. Yeah, okay, so basically, I would say because it's we headed out on June 42 and we will be out for two months. So basically, you could technically speaking saying that the SJ radar will be available from half the patrol. But uh, I'll just say that it's not available. But we do have our uh, SD radar. So we're going to go ahead and roll for... Uh, that's damaged now. Because of the flood water. So we're going to go ahead and roll to see if that uh, is repaired or not. And we go to our sub damage and repair chart. And we look at SD and SG radar. Basically if it becomes inoperable I'm going to apply a negative die roll modifier on all my aircraft encounters. Uh, but on a 1 to 3 it's fixed. 4 to 6 it's inoperable. So let's roll a D6 and see what happens with, uh, with the engineer. If he can fix it. And I roll a 2. That means I've successfully fixed that. Uh, okay, so once I've done that, I need to roll for crew injury. And crew injury is quite simple. Uh, you roll a 2d6 to see who will be injured. Usually it's one of the crew. And then uh, our 1d6 to see uh, how serious the injury is. So let's start by assigning the injury to see who, who gets injured. And we roll a 7. Remember 6 to 10, that was a uh, a ordinary crew, so that means that an ordinary crew member got hit. We roll 1d6, 1 to 3 is a light wound. So one of our uh, ordinary crew members got a light wound. We'll just take a light wound marker and put it on one of our generic crew um, counters or whatever you spaces on the playmat. Okay, so that's it. Uh, this this uh, campaign isn't very, going very good. But there's still time to turn things around, so let's hope our crew uh, have a little bit better luck. Rolling 2d6 on the next travel chart. Oh, almost rolled one of those uh, random events again. Again, we go to our encounter chart and we see that in the Philippines, an 11, unfortunately, is nothing. So yeah, guys, uh, it's kind of hard. Moving on to the next travel box, which is an X2, so we'll use a D6 just to keep track of how many times we rolled with that specific box. Rolling to D6 and we roll a 7. Let's see, Philippines 7. Uh, this time we were a little bit more lucky. We have a ship plus an escort. Okay, so the first thing we do is roll to see what kind of size the ship is. 1 to 4 is going to be a small ship, 5 to 6 is going to be a large ship. We have a small ship. So again, you remember we roll 1d6 and 2d10 to uh, identify our target. And we're going to go ahead and look at our small freighter target roster A. And we're looking for 83. So 83 is uh, the freighter uh, Taisuku Maru. Alright, so 2500 is not very good, but I'm going to go ahead and engage it anyway. Uh, because I, uh, I don't want to fail yet another mission. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just write down here uh, the name of the boat. Bush... 
show tomorrow. And he is, or she is, whatever you want to call that, uh, 2600 uh, tonnage. Okay, so that means now we are going to have to go to our left where I have my submarine combat mat. Alright guys, time for our first combat and we're going to go ahead and um, put one escort counter here in the space of the escort uh, on our combat mat. And then we're going to go ahead and roll to see if we have night time or daytime today. I am hoping for night time uh, since it's usually much better to engage your targets. Uh, this is pretty simple. On a 1 to 3 you will have daytime. On a 4 to 6 you're going to have night time. So let's see. Uh, we rolled daytime. Uh, again, I want night time. What I'm going to do is I'm going to roll again to see if I can switch time. Uh, on a f 1 to 4 I'm going to be successful. Uh, so yeah. Okay, so I managed to change the time to night. We have our counter here. Uh, and it's a two-sided one for day and night and again we have night time. I'm gonna go ahead and stay surfaced I think uh, and let's see I have to decide now how many uh, torpedoes I want to send against this guy and at what range. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna attack from a um, Submerged pos position because I don't want a negative uh, die roll modifier on the escort detection, which you will get in uh, from light surface attacks in 42 to 43. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, fire from medium range. And in the beginning of the war, your dud rate is incredibly high. So I'm gonna go ahead and send all of my four uh, torpedoes, which are loaded in my forward torpedo tubes. I'm just gonna go ahead and reload those in advance. Okay so what we'll do now guys is roll for these uh, to see if they hit our target. Again we have a small freighter. It's 2600 tonnage so that means we'll see here on the damage if it's from 1001 to 5000 it has two health points. So let's roll some dice uh, on our uh, torpedo deck uh, gun fire chart to see if we hit or not. We are firing on medium range so we need a 7 or less to hit on a 2d6. We don't really have any modifiers. Uh, no positive or negative ones. Uh, we could do a sur surface torpedo attack to get a minus one, but I don't want to do that because of the negative one you get here uh, from doing a night surface attack. So we'll just uh, do a normal medium uh, range attack. Again, seven or lower to hit. We're going to roll 2d6. Let's see if we can bring in this dice tower in a way to make it visible for you guys. So it looks like my first uh, my first torpedo was a successful hit. Second one missed. Whoops. Third one is not looking good. Nope. Third one is also a miss. We roll again. Uh, and the fourth one is also a mess. So I have only one hit. And now comes the hard part because now I'm gonna roll for duds. And we'll take a look here at our torpedo dud chart. Uh, from 12, uh, from December 41 to July 42, duds are gonna be on a one to four on a one D6. It's gonna be 66% chance that it's a dud. It's gonna start getting better in uh, August 42 and then finally be pretty decent in 44 and 45. But right now we're still in June I believe. Let's see, yeah we're in June. So we're gonna have to roll according to this uh, 1 to 4 unfortunately. So again let's hope that we get a 5 or a 6 and we get a 3. So our one hit is unfortunately a dud. There's no damage at all. Uh, to our small freighter target. 
So what we're going to do now is uh, go to our escort detection chart. We're going to see if the escort detects us. Uh, we need to roll an 8 or less to be undetected. We see there's a bunch of die roll modifiers. It is one that's now two, but there's none of them that really uh, comply to us. What I'm going to do, though, is uh, I believe I'm going to exceed test depth. That's usually what I do early in the game because I just want to uh, get the game uh, moving so I can get a better um, dud uh, result for my submarine. So when you exceed test depth, basically you go deeper than you were supposed to. You take an, a hull damage and again you're going to roll 2d6. And if the result is the same or lower, uh, you are destroyed, uh, you are sunk. Uh, or, and when I'm saying lower or the same, it's as your hull damage. So for example here, nothing can happen. But if I would go to 2 uh, or 3, that means I could roll a 2 and be sunk. Yeah. And to clear that out, if you roll lower... Uh, then this value, which you can't now, but say that I would have, for example, 4 and I roll a 3, I'm going to be sunk. If I roll a 4, I will take 1 additional hull damage and I'll re-roll again. If I roll higher, so I roll here a 6, nothing happens, I, I get a positive die roll modifier uh, when rolling for the escort detection. So anyway, I just took 1 damage and now I'm going to roll for the escort detection. You remember I need to roll an 8 or lower. Uh, to be undetected, but now it's going to be a 9 or lower because I exceed test depth. And look at that guys, I roll a 9, so it was lucky that I decided to exceed test depth. So we survived uh, the escort uh, detection attempt, uh, but the small freighter is still on scratch and he's trying to escape. So we're going to go ahead and try to follow him. And we will roll 1d6 on a 1 to 4, we've successfully followed him. And we roll a 5, so this guy gets away. Uh, he and the escort uh, sail to deliver some vital supplies to the allies. So, let's go back to the right side. So we're still unsuccessful, we haven't managed to sink any ships. We move on now to the second part of this box and that basically means that we're also uh, have entered in uh, July now, uh, 1942. That means that we now finally have the HD SJ radar available. So if we roll a 5 we're gonna get to re-roll instead of having that uh, annoying no encounters. So we roll 2d6 again on our encounter chart. And, uh, and we roll a 5. Oh, look at that, guys. Yeah, that's funny that it happened now. So let's go to our encounter chart. Uh, again, we're in the Philippines. And you'll see here that a roll of 5, it's nothing. But if you have SJ, you actually get to re-roll. So we get to re-roll our 2d6. And we're rolling 8. And Philippines, unfortunately, 8 is nothing. <laughs> My guys aren't having much luck uh, locating those enemy ships. Let's move on and see if we can find something before we fail another mission. We roll a 4. Let's see what number 4 is in the Philippines. And I'm sorry guys, again number 4 is nothing. So we're not very lucky sailors. This is the last travel box of the Philippines, our last chance. And we roll a 10. Let's see what can a 10 be in the Philippines. Ooh, number 10. That's a convoy. So now we def definitely have a chance of finding something good. So a convoy always uh, has three ships and an escort ship. So let's go to our left side to our combat mat and let's check out what kind of ships we encounter. So again with the escort you're always going to have, oh sorry, with the convoy you're always going to have an enemy escort. Uh, and again we're rolling, we have three ships, so we have three, three targets to identify. And we're going to go ahead and roll 2d10 and, or actually we're going to go ahead and roll two, uh, 3d6 to identify how big our enemy ships are. So we have two small ships and one large one. 
And since I'm only going to engage a large one, that's the only one I'm going to roll for. I'm going to skip rolling for the smaller targets. With my dud rate as it is, there is no reason to engage several targets. I think you might agree. Okay, so we have a large target. It's number, uh, number 3 on uh, roster A. And number three on roster A, that's a good one, 17,000. Okay, this is our chance, guys. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and write that guy down. Third ship, Asama Maru, uh, 17,000. Let's see, what did it say? 17,000, yeah, that's uh, quite good tonnage. All right, so that's a large passenger ship. Uh, if they have over 10,000 tonnage, they are uh, having four hit points instead of three. So this is going to be a hard target to uh, to hit. But we're going to do everything in our power to hit him. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and engage with four of my torpedoes. And before I do that, I'm actually going to go ahead and roll to see what time of day it is. I'm hoping for a four to six. Yeah, we roll a 1, so it's daytime. And now the question is, do we want to roll to see if we can switch tonight? And we're going to do that because now we have the SG radar. And once you have the SG radar, if you want to change from day to night, uh, it's going to be successful on a 1 to 5. Without the SG radar, it will only be successful on a 1 to 4. So the chances are really low of uh, failing this. It will only fail on a roll of 6. So I'm trying to change from, I'm following this ship, trying to change from day to night. And we roll a five, okay, that's good. I was a little bit worried it would be a six. And that means we have officially made it to night time. I'm gonna go ahead and attack this guy while surfaced. I'm gonna do a night surface attack. I'm gonna try to be brave and we're doing so at medium range, okay. So uh, again, we will go and take a look, quick look here at our uh, torpedo and deck gun fire chart. We'll see at medium range we will hit on seven or less. However, when performing a surface torpedo attack with a minus one modifier, so basically we hit on eight or less. So uh, we still have that very bad dud rate, but who knows what can happen. So I'm sending four. Uh, four of these torpedoes at him and I'm gonna go ahead and fire the first uh, torpedo eight or lower ah oh, first one is a miss Let's see if the second one is better second one is a hit third one is a miss as well oh, I can't believe these guys and the last one, I have some really bad crew. I don't know what they're doing. Okay, only one hit again. And again, it's a dud on a roll of one to four. <sighs> Guys, it's a dud. So this guy is again untouched. Uh, and now we're going to go ahead and roll for our escort detection. And you know what, guys? We were a little bit brave. So we're going to have the negative modifier here. Uh, which is night surface attack from night under 42 for 43 uh, and that means it's not going to be an eight or less we need to roll a seven or less to have a successful uh, escape from this uh, escort ship Ooh, and we roll a six that's that's very good news all right so we managed to escape detection of the escort however uh, now I'm going to take my time before I forget so and reload. And I'm going to go ahead and try to follow this ship. And basically, uh, it's following is uh, one to five. I'm successful with my SG radar, which I have now. Ooh, it's a five, so it's it's good. Uh, we're we're good. Okay, let's see. We have to reroll now to see what time of day it is. One to three, it's day. Four to six, it's night. And it's six, so we're at night. Okay, I'm gonna try the same tactic again. I'm gonna send four torpedoes, except this time I'm gonna try uh, and play it safe. I'm gonna stay 
or should I? Nah, man, there's no playing safe here. I gotta get this ship or I'm gonna fail my second time. And you know, I think the third time it is and you're out of the game. So let's not play it safe. Medium range, surfaced, night surface attack for uh, torpedoes. Okay, you remember guys, I need eight or less to hit. First one is a hit. Whoops, second one is a... Uh, I don't know what it is, we'll try again. It was a 1 on the floor, that would be a critical hit, but unfortunately uh, it rolled differently once I re-rolled it. Okay, we have another hit. I'm getting excited again. Oh, we have a critical hit. Oh man. A critical hit is plus 3 damage if, in case it's not a dud. So what I do first here guys is I'm gonna roll this one dice to see if the first, the only critical hit is a dud or not. Ah oh, yeah guys, it's not a dud, so it's plus 3 damage. That's sweet. Okay, so it's not a dud and then once you have uh, rolled to see if it's a dud or not, you're gonna roll on the attack damage chart with a 1d6 to see how much damage the tor torpedo causes. It always causes at least one damage, but it can cause up to four damage depending on the roll. So let's see how much damage we cause with it. And we roll a three. So a three, that's gonna be quite a nice result. Uh, three is gonna be two damage. So that's pretty sweet because then we have two plus three for the critical hits. That's going to be five damage. That alone is going to be enough to sink this guy. So uh, five damage, but just for fun, let's see these three other, uh, if they hit or not. Uh, let's see if they are they hit, they did, but let's see if they are duds. So rolling uh, two, uh, three D6 and actually only one of them is a dud. So let's re-roll these two to see how much damage they do. A three and a four. Uh, a four would be again one damage, and that would be the three would be two damage. So we have three damage from these two, and five damage from that. So this time we did a total of eight damage, and this guy only has four health points, so he's pretty screwed. So this guy is a goner, uh, uh, and now we <laughs> come to the terrible part. The part where we will roll for escort detection. Remember, 8 or lower we are undetected, but because we did a night surface attack we have a negative uh, 1 on our uh, die roll, so we need a 7 or lower. Also, we can't do a, a, a exceed test step now because we did the night surface attack. Whew, guys, we are detected. The guy detected us. Okay, so that's unfortunate. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to change this over to this side and we're going to go ahead now and roll to see our um, escort attack. So the escort rolled a 4. We'll go here to our escort attack. Uh, a 4 to 6 is one hit. We have some die roll modifiers here. And if we look at that, we have a night surface attack. The first round we also have a plus 1 there. So that means we rolled a 5. Uh, five is still only one hit. Okay, so now we have our sub damage chart. We're gonna roll 2d6 different colored ones to see uh, what that one hit is. We'll also have this incoming hits on subs. That's a good counter to use to uh, not get confused and accidentally uh, do one hit too much or little. So we roll two different colored d6. The black one is going to be the, the 10 and the white one is going to be the 1. So this is 15. So we go back to our sub uh, damage chart and 15 is dive planes. That's horrible because dive planes I believe makes it even easier for these guys to uh, catch you again. So we go to our sub mat here and put the damaged dive planes on our dive planes. Okay guys, so uh, we did our one hit and now we're gonna go ahead and do escort detection again. What I'm gonna do is exceed test depth once again, rolling 2d6 and it's more than two so we're fine, uh, we survived, but we are gonna roll for detection now. Uh, we're rolling eight and I think it's still not good enough. 
ADOLS is undetected, but then unfortunately we have, let's see, dive planes out, that's a plus one, so that's a nine now. Uh, previously detected, that's a plus one, so we have a ten now. Uh, exceeding test depth, so the ten turns into a nine. We're still detected and we're gonna have to roll yet again for escort air attack short. And we roll a six. I don't believe we have any of these uh, die roll modifiers now. Nope, but six, it's still one hit that we need to uh, allocate on our submarine. And we roll the two different colored ones. And we roll a 32. We look at our uh, damage chart. 32 is minor damage. That's very lucky because minor damage means nothing happens. So again, we go back here. I'm going to go yet again and do uh, a exceeding test depth. Whoa, okay. We're fine. We're fine, guys. Uh, let's uh, check our escort detection. Now. Oof, eight. We're still, uh, yeah, we're still, uh, we haven't been able to escape. Let's roll uh, four hits. Ooh, we roll an 11, that's not good guys. Uh, 11, uh, that means three hits. Unfortunately, and still we have none of these, but seems like we might have soon. So four hits, let's see what they managed to hit. We roll a 54, uh, 54, let's see if I can focus with my camera, flooding times two. Okay, so flooding doesn't really hurt us, but it can be painful if it happens too much. Three hits remaining. And we roll a 62. And 62 is aft torpedo doors. That's fine by me. And I'm happy as long as they don't destroy more of my vital equipment for escaping. We have two more hits. 62. Uh, we already rolled that. That's the aft torpedo doors. Again, we're Lucky nothing happens. Last hit to uh, put out and that's 64. Uh, forward torpedo doors odd. And to be honest guys, I don't really care about that because um, we already have, um, we launched all our forward torpedoes. Uh, odd. Okay, that's good. Okay, so we have uh, one more chance now to escape. Again, I'm gonna be brave and exceed test depth. Taking one hull damage. Five. <laughs> okay, we're good guys. We made it. We just barely made it. Let's roll for escort detection. Oh, I think we made it guys. Let's see a six. Let's go to this chart. So, uh, six. Die planes are out, so that's gonna be uh, a seven. Previously detected, so it's an 8 now. And I think the night surface attack, I believe that's only the first round. But even if it isn't, say that it isn't, we have a 9. We exceeded test depth, so that's going to be an 8 anyway. And that means 8 or less undetected. So finally, guys, we have actually managed to make it out alive. Uh, the escort, uh, we, we escaped him. And we're now going to go ahead and head back to the safety of our base. So again, we were really lucky. We sunk the large passenger ship, ship with 17,000 tonnage. That's a good deal, guys. So uh, we are heading now in... Oh, actually, before we do that, we're going to go ahead and try to repair these systems that got damaged by that escort. Now, if you look here, you'll see a number under these boxes or in these boxes, and that's the number required to repair it. So dive planes need a roll of two uh, or lower to repair. And we get a two, so the dive planes are successfully repaired. Uh, the F torpedo doors also need a two or lower, and that's also successfully repaired. The odd uh, forward torpedo doors needs a two or lower. And it gets a free, so now it becomes inoperable. All right, let's head to the first transit box. We roll a five, nothing happens. Remember, it only happens on two or 12. 
last transit box will roll a seven we have successfully made it back into our base in australia uh, i'm glad i did take that chance and sink that large ship instead of chickening out and failing our uh, second time so this is definitely a successful mission we've sunk 1700 tonnage of shipping and we'll put an s instead of a f because it's a success not a failure however we do have some uh, refitting to do here guys uh, our uh, five in hull damage or sorry is four is going to give us plus two months of refit so we have the standard month we have the uh, plus two months here we do have a wounded crew member but that's all right he's only lightly wounded and he's uh, he's uh, healing up during this refit time we also have an inoperable system but you can have up to two or i believe three sorry it's uh, two two systems uh, inoperable and it's not going to add any refit if you have three or more it's only going to be one month no matter how many um how many months of uh, or sorry how many systems you have damaged it can be 10 15 doesn't matter one month one thing i've noticed we forgot about was the flooding and the way flooding basically works is that uh, at the end of uh, the combat round we're gonna roll a 1d6 on a 5 to 6 uh, that flooding is gonna be one more so i would roll like this that would be a 4 that means i've successfully stopped the flooding if i would have rolled a six i would have increased it and then once combat is over you uh, always r reset it so basically it's hard i've only been killed once with flooding it was in the hunters and it was really a great game even though i failed uh, but uh, still i mean um, it's easy to forget about because it's not usual uh, usual thing to uh, succumb to all right guys so we're now in november 1942 and our dud rate is going to be a little bit better we're going to have a dud rate of uh, one to three instead of one to four uh, and before i forget so i'm going to go ahead and reload uh, my torpedo tubes but you don't have to watch that so i'm just going to edit it out so before uh, we go on to the next patrol we're going to go uh, through something that i forgot about after the first patrol but basically uh, after you complete a patrol if it's successful you will get a scp1 i believe is submarine something in sydney and a battle star for your boat the battle star are stored here and your insignias are stored over here uh, as a personal award for your captain and now since we have successfully completed two missions uh, we have two battle stars and two of these insignas or the second eleven uh, insignia uh, also uh, you have to uh, if you sank three ships you'll receive a bronze star if you sank four ships a silver star five ships a navy cross uh, and uh, if you sink eight ships third patrol of sinking eight ships you will get a medal of honor so that's very very hard you'll also get uh, a role for a navy unit commendation or a presidential unit citation if you're all six or if you're sink six or seven ships so uh, th those are the things to keep track of after you uh, have successfully uh, completed a patrol if you fail patrols three times in a row uh, the game is lost unless you have a bronze star silver star or navy cross or medal of honor uh, and the scpi stands for submarine combat patrol insignia and uh, these guys uh, don't really do much of a difference uh, but these guys are quite good at battle stars because if you lose some of your crew uh, the new crew might be uh, veterans or experts and the submarine combat uh, insignia award uh, will give you a chance uh, when you're rolling after your third successful patrol or every third successful patrol you will roll for crew upgrades or crew experience upgrade so for example your uh, chief engineer might become an expert and if it's your second or forward uh, upgrade attempt and you roll uh, for expert for something you already have you will have a re-roll if you have the s uh, the scpi 
So anyway, <laughs> I forgot it the first, uh, the first after the first patrol, but I remember it now. So that's why we have two battle stars and two of these. Okay, so let's move on. Uh, enough of me babbling. We're gonna move on now to our uh, fourth patrol after four months of refit. So we roll uh, two dice, and now we're in uh, November 42. Again, we rolled nine. So November 42, nine means we're going to Indochina. So we'll mark Indochina here. Take our little porpoise counter and move it to Indochina, which is all the way down here. So our first box is a transit box, and I think you remember by now transit boxes not, only things happens if you roll a, a 2 or 12. We roll a 3, so we almost get caught by an airplane. Second transit box. Let's see, no, our luck doesn't run out. We move into our first Indochina uh, travel box and we roll a 5. Let's look at our uh, encounter chart and we have Indochina here and a 5. Uh, oh, as always a 5 is nothing but if you have the SG radar you get to re-roll. So let's re-roll those D6 and roll a 7. Let's go back to the chart and look at that 7. That's a ship without an escort. That's uh, something very nice. So uh, we'll roll first, determine the size of the ship. One to four is small, five to six is a large ship. And it's a small ship, unfortunately, but uh, it's still an uh, um, uh, um, uh, protected ship. So we roll two D10 and one D6. We're gonna go to small target uh, or small freighter target roster C and it's going to be number 58. So let's see here what we have. 58, the Tagonura Moro, uh, a small freighter for 3,500. So I'm going to go ahead and on my log sheet note him. Let's see if uh, 58 we said, right? Freighter Tagu. Nora, and I don't know why all of them say say Maru in the end, but basically all of them do. Three thousand five hundred tonnage. Okay, so let's see if we can get this guy. We're gonna go ahead and move left now to the combat mat. So we have a small freighter, uh, three thousand five hundred tonnage. So he's gonna have two health points. Uh, doesn't matter what time it is of day since he's unescorted. There is no escort, but we are going to do a surface attack, uh, of course, in close range. So we'll bring our uh, dice tower over here. And what happens now actually is what I get to do is I get to decide uh, for each and every. I have my forward torpedo tubes, my deck gun, and my aft torpedo tubes. I can fire them all, but I can. If in, in the comparison to firing at an escort chips, I can uh, fire my deck gun first. If I am not successful, I can fire my aft torpedo tubes. After that, I go, can go to my forward torpedo tubes and so on. I don't have to fire them all at once. So we start with firing the maximum allowed of shots from our deck gun, which is two shots. And we roll two D6 as normal. And again, we uh, look at our uh, torpedo deck gun fire chart. We are at close range, so an 8 or less is a hit. So uh, that first roll is a hit. So let's see our second roll. Our second roll is unfortunately a miss, so only one hit from the deck gun. So we look at our... Um, Attack. We don't roll for uh, duds with our deck gun, but we roll for attack damage chart. So uh, we'll see here we have a three inch gun here. So we're gonna have a plus one to our roll, which is not very good because that means basically we can only get one damage uh, no matter what we roll. Even if we roll a five uh, or a one, anyway, a five that's gonna be a six, four or more is one damage. So this guy 
takes one damage. That means I have to engage him with more ammunition. I'm gonna go ahead and fire my aft torpedo tubes, uh, both of those torpedoes, at close range. Uh, and it's a surface torpedo attack, so I get plus one positive uh, die roll modifier. So I now need a nine or lower to hit. I roll a seven, so the first torpedo is a successful hit. And then I roll, uh, let's see, eight. So both of those guys are successful torpedo hits. Now I'm gonna see if they are duds. On a one to three, it's a dud. Five to, uh, sorry, four to six, it's a successful hit. And both of them actually hit, so that's nice. So we know that a torpedo will do at least one damage and both of these are successful hits. It's going to be at least two damage. So I'm not going to roll to see how much damage the small freighter has been successfully sunk. And I'm going to go ahead now and... Oh, I've already reloaded my tubes. No, I haven't. I fired my aft tubes. So I'm going to go ahead and reload those and we will go back to our log sheet. So we'll go ahead and mark that up. 3,500 additional uh, tonnage sunk and we're gonna go ahead and continue our patrol. So we move in to the next Indochina um, area. We roll, uh, let's see, what does that say? An 8. So let's see what an 8 is. An 8 is actually a convoy. So let's check that out. And I can tell you right now, I'm gonna go ahead and start by rolling to see what time of day it is, because I only wanna attack at night time. And we roll a five, so we're lucky that's gonna be in night time. Let's roll 3d6 to see the sizes of the ships. And we only have small ships. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and roll uh, 2d10 and 1d6 to uh, identify our target ships and on roster B let's see we have 78 and 78 that's 3200 okay so we'll see the next one is 32 32 is 4700 so that's better and then for our last ship in the convoy We have 87 on also uh, roster B. Let's see, 87. Uh, there we go. Okay, so 32 is the best one. It's Taikei Maru, a small freighter on 4,700 tonnage. So that's the one we're gonna go ahead and try to engage. Okay, so I'm just gonna mark him up here. F Tai. A Maru 4700 tonnage. Okay, let's go to the left and to our combat math. So, again, uh, there's I don't see a reason for me to uh, we have an escort to engage more than one ship. That's the reason why uh, I'm only um, taking notes of the small uh, freighter with the highest tonnage. Again, 1001 to 5000, you will have two hit points. So uh, we're going to go ahead and engage this guy. We're going to do so from submerged uh, medium range. And I'm going to go ahead and bring my dust tower over here. I'm going to go ahead and engage him with four forward torpedoes. And again, medium range. Uh, I need uh, seven or less to hit. So I'm rolling 2d6. And the first one is unfortunately a miss. Second one is also a miss. Third one is a successful hit, or we don't know that yet if it's a dud or not. Ah, crap. Fourth one is also a miss. So let's see if it's a dud or not. On a one to three is a dud. And it's a dud. Okay, so we uh, unfortunately have a dud. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and exceed test depth. I always do. I am a chicken. So now I need to roll. Let's see. We are in 
Okay, we're still in 942. So let's look at our uh, escort detection chart. I'm sorry for the focusing on this camera, it's really not good. You can see that in 43 uh, you will have a um, negative modifier. But we're still in 42. So we need a 9 or lower because we have exceeded test depth. Otherwise it would have been 8 or lower. So we have successfully exceeded test depth. Let's try to follow this guy. We managed on a 1 to 5. We managed to follow the ship. Let's see what time of day it is. It's night time. So we're gonna do uh, gonna go ahead and do the exact same kind of attack. Uh, we're attacking with four steam torpedoes submerged at night on medium range. We need a uh, um, seven or less to hit. Miss. 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 Okay, all of them miss for some reason. Uh, we are going to go ahead and do a exceed test step again. And we're fine. Uh, rolling for escort detection. Uh, nine or lower to stay undetected. And we're at a four, so we're good. Again, trying to follow this guy. Before I do, I'm going to go ahead and reload here my forward torpedo tubes. Trying to follow, I've, let's see, successfully followed him. Uh, see, this night or day, it's daytime. On a one to five, I successfully uh, changed to night, and I have. And, okay guys, this is the last try on this uh, poor small hunted freighter. We're engaging with four torpedoes at medium range. Seven or less to hit. The first one is a hit. Second one is a miss. Third one is a miss. I am not lucky. That's three misses, one hit. Uh, one to three, it's a dud. Four to six, it's a hit. It's a one, so it's a dud. Unfortunately, it's a dud, guys. Uh, let's roll for escort detection. I'm gonna go ahead and... Pfft. I'm not gonna exceed test at the time. I think I, I need to roll an eight or less. Okay. So I am detected. Let's roll to see how many hits I receive. I receive seven hits. Again, we go to our uh, escort detection. Seven hits, that means, uh, or seven to eight roll, that means uh, two hits. We have none of these uh, nasty uh, roll modifiers. So I'm gonna go ahead and allocate two of my hits. I'm gonna go ahead and move this one around over here. Uh, so I have two hits, and again, to allocate those hits, I will roll uh, two dice of different color, 2d6. And we roll a 26. So 26, that's going to be my diesel engine uh, number three. That's not good, okay. Diesel engine number three. That's not good at all, guys. Uh, okay, we have one more hit. And it's gonna be 24. Let's look at 24 AA guns, so that's okay. Could have been worse. And then uh, again, we're gonna roll for escort uh, detection. We need now a seven or lower. Now uh, we roll the seven. Let's look at this so we don't forget any modifier. Uh, test the long range. Because I have a feeling that the diesel engine kind of screws you somewhere. Fuel tanks damage. No, we're good to go, guys. We actually made it. So we made it, but unfortunately we didn't hit our target. He got away. Uh, but so did we. So all of us live to fight another day. Let's go back to the right side. So before we continue our patrol, we're gonna roll for uh, our diesel engine. We need to roll a 1 to 4 to fix it. And we roll a 5, so our diesel engine is out. Lucky for us, we have 4 diesel engines. But if one or more get hit, we're gonna have to be towed out of here. So anyway guys, let's continue. I don't have any more forward torpedoes, only two aft torpedoes left. So basically, unless I find another um, escorted target, I'm not gonna be able to uh, take out any more ships. Moving on, 
using that uh, d6 to uh, see uh, where I'm at and I'm rolling an 8 and let's go back to our encounter chart yeah 8 is as last time it means a uh, convoy so nope we're not gonna go ahead and engage any escorted ships with this little ammunition left so then we roll a 7 and a 7 for Indo China. Look at that, guys. A 7 is a ship. We're st I'm, I'm still not convinced I can sink it since I have no more forward torpedo ammo. Let's see the size of the ship first. It's a small ship. And it's gonna be a roster B again. And it's gonna be 88. I think we might have seen that. 88. That's gonna be Hiburu Moru, 4400. Again, that's a pretty decent ship. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark that here. Uh, passenger ship. Hiburu. He. Hi. Buri. Moru. 4400. Okay, so let's go to the left to our combat mat again. So before I forget it, I'm gonna go ahead and just roll for uh, fixing my AA guns, which got damaged uh, by that escort. To fix your AA guns, you roll a d6 and you have to roll a 1 to 2. We roll a 4, so our AA guns are inoperable, unfortunately. Okay, so we have a small passenger ship here uh, on uh, 4400 tonnage, so that's gonna have two uh, hit points. And we're gonna go ahead and fire on uh, um, surfaced at close range. And we are gonna go ahead and open up with our deck gun with two salvos. So we'll start by rolling 2d6 for that. We need an 8 or lower to hit. The first one is a hit. And the second one is also a hit. And remember, deck guns will always do at least one damage. So it's gonna be at least two hit points. This guy is. Uh, officially taken out. So lucky for us. Let's go back to our log sheet. So that con concludes our combat. I'm gonna go ahead and mark this guy up. So we successfully taken out two ships. I don't know if it's much to brag about because both of them were, were unescorted. We'll move on now uh, through two more transit boxes or travel boxes in Indochina. Uh, we roll a 7 again, <laughs> and again, 7 in Indochina is an uh, unescorted ship. So we roll for size. Uh, luckily it's a small ship, I think that's the only thing we might be able to sink. And the small ship is gonna be roster B again, and number, I think that's number 100 actually. And number 100 is... Let's see if I can focus P Hino Moro, which is a passenger ship number three. 4,400, that's a good one, but I'm not sure we can sink it, but we'll give it a try. Uh, let's see, P Hino Moro, number three for some reason. 4,400. Let's head over to our combat mat once again. So again, we have a small uh, passenger ship. We're gonna go ahead, uh, here he has uh, 4,400, so two health points. Again, of course, close uh, range with surfaced. We only have one uh, salvo of ammunition left with our deck gun. So we're gonna go ahead and roll 2d6 for that. And, ooh, it's a hit. Luckily, it's a hit. And with a 3-inch gun, you can only do one damage, so it's going to be one damage to that enemy. Uh, we have two aft torpedoes remaining, so we're going to go ahead and use both of those. And we will hit on 9 or lower, since we're at close range. So the first torpedo is a hit. And the second one is unfortunately a miss. So now we have a 50% chance of taking this boat out because remember, uh, we only have the, the, the four to six successful hit since one to three is a dud. So let's roll one D6 and see. 
Uh, that's that doesn't matter because I, I, I dropped it over the. It's not a proper roll. Ah, it's a mess. It's a dud. Man, these duds are so annoying. So uh, I would have gotten a bronze star if I would have taken that chip out, but unfortunately I didn't. Uh, and he made it out alive. So what happens now guys is actually something not very good because I have to roll since I was unsuccessful taking him out I have to roll for a additional round of combat and if I get a, a let's see if I get a two uh, escort arrives if I get a free an aircraft arrives so that's not very good at all. So let's see what happens guys. We roll a 2d6 and we roll an 8, so we're safe from the additional round of combat, but we are gonna retreat since we don't have any ammunition left whatsoever. So unfortunately we won't mark that ship up since we didn't uh, take him out. We move on now to the last uh, box of Indochina and basically we just do it to see if we meet any aircraft or something like that. We roll a 10 and in Indochina a 10 would be uh, two ships plus an escort. We don't engage, we have no ammunition. First travel box, Ooh, close call, nothing happens. Remember only happens on 2 or 12. And last travel box, nothing happens. Okay, so we uh, successfully make it back to Australia. And we have successfully done uh, our mission. We have sank two ships, so that's going to be... We had 17,000, it's going to be plus 3,500 and 4,400. So it's going to be uh, 25,500, uh, 24,900 total uh, shipping sunk. So I think that's pretty decent considering we had some bad luck with our rolls. Uh, again, uh, we get uh, another battle star, so we now have a total of three battle stars, and our SCPI is increased to three successful patrols for our captain award. I think this is there. It's a strange little uh, insignia. I think this is the correct way that you'll uh, wear it. Anyway, we have two inoperable systems here, so that's cool. That's not going to give us uh, any additional uh, month of refit. Uh, however, we do have some hull damage from our exceeding test depth, two in total, so that's going to give us one extra month of refit. So we now have refit until February 943 and we're gonna head out now in March 43. But before we do that we're gonna go ahead and roll for our captain promotion because we've successfully been going at it now for one year so let's see if our captain gets promoted before we head out again. What we'll do is we will roll a d6 and on a 1 to 3 we are promoted and on a 4 to 6 we are not promoted. However, there are modifiers for this and you will find them on page number 19 in the book of the rules. Uh, and basically uh, you can see them all here and the ones that will be for us will be uh, plus one for each unsuccessful patrol during the 12 month period and we have uh, Unsuccessful patrol, so it's gonna be a plus one for our roll. So we need to roll a one to two to get our promotion Let's see guys Oof, We roll a five so that's gonna be a failed promotion attempt uh, We don't make it for promotion And you might also have noticed that this was our third successful patrol and that means that it's time to roll for crew advancement. We do that by rolling a d6 and we roll a 4. And we go to our chart here for crew advancement and 4 means our third officer uh, is promoted. So uh, we bring out our third officer expert counter. Uh, and put him right over here. And basically, what that means is, is the third, if the earth, if the third officer takes command, there's no command penalty. Okay, guys, it's time to move on. We're gonna go ahead and roll for our next assignment. And we roll two d six. 
and we go to our Australia patrol assignment chart and we roll a nine. Let's see, we have, uh, we are now in March 1943. It's gonna be this one. So our nine is gonna be the Philippines. So we write down here the Philippines. And we move our porpoise marker to the Philippines. So as usual, we have uh, two transit boxes to clear before we can start hunting for targets. And I think you know by now that the only thing that will happen is if we roll a 2 or a 12. So we enter the first Philippine uh, travel box and we roll a 4. I believe that should be something. Actually, uh, in the Philippines, a 4 is unfortunately nothing. So we go ahead and move to the next travel box. And this time we roll a 10. And I can tell you in the Philippines, yes, actually this is something. In the Philippines, number 10 is a convoy. So at last we meet some ships and now I'm gonna go ahead and roll for ship size. And we have one large ship and two small ones. Uh, as usual, I will only engage one target. Uh, and that target is going to be on chart uh, large freighter A and it's going to be 98. Let's have a look. 98 on large freighter target roster A is going to be Kosui Maru, which is a large passion passenger uh, ship for 7,100 tons. So I'm going to go ahead and mark that up. What did I say? It was 7,100 tonnage. Okay, so let's go ahead and roll to see just if it's a night or day. And we have daytime, so I'm going to go ahead and try to change to night time. And I'm successful on a 1 to 5 with the SJ radar. So we have night time, let's go to our left side to our combat mat. All right, guys, so we're engaging a convoy. A convoy always has an escort. Again, a convoy always consists of three ships. But since I'm only engaging one target, I don't feel the need to uh, identify all of those ships since I want the larger ships and the other two were small ships. Uh, okay, so I'm going to engage this large passenger. Uh, she is 7,100 ton, so she's going to have three hit points. Uh, another note here is that you see I also reloaded my tubes and stuff. I forgot about that in a refit. Doesn't really matter. Once you discover that you forgot it, just put them on the play mat. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and fire at night while submerged. I'm going to do so at medium range. Uh, and I'm going to engage with four steamed uh, torpedoes. So we're going to roll for our hits and as usual on medium range we hit on seven or lower. So the first torpedo is a miss. The second is also a miss. The third is a hit. And the fourth is also a hit. So we have two hits. Now let's see if they're duds or not. We still have that awful dud ratio of one to three. So we need to roll higher than three. And, I'm, and we do, fortunately. So we actually have two hits here. Let's roll for damage. And we'll go to our attack damage chart. And we'll see we have a two. So that's a nice one. That's three damage. Just enough uh, alone to sink that passenger ship. And the four will do uh, one damage. We have a total of four damage. That's definitely enough to sink that large passenger. And that means we've successful. We're going to go ahead now and go on to our escort detection uh, phase. And let's see. I'm going to go ahead and exceed test depth. I'm not going to roll for that since I can't get equal to or lower than one. So I'm going to go straight to rolling for detection. Whoops, the dice didn't want to join. Let's do that again. And wow. Okay, so we have a 10. Uh, with our modifier, it's going to be a 9. But then we're actually in 43 now. And we have this nasty modifier. Um, 
33 to 44 uh, plus one. So that roll is gonna end up being a 10 and we're detected. So we're detected guys. We need now to go to uh, our damage phase and see how much this guy is gonna hit us for. And we roll 2d6 and he hits us for eight damage or eight uh, roll. So we have two hits for that. Let's see if we have any modifiers here. Nope, we don't, but we have two hits to deal uh, our ship. And as usual, we're gonna roll uh, 2d6, different color d6, uh, to sort that damage. So the first roll is 61, and we see that 61 is hydrophones, and that's actually not a very good one, uh, because that will make it easy for them to get us. So hydrophones are damaged. We still have one hit to deal out. And it's gonna be 32 this time. And 32 is minor damage, and that's a cool one because that doesn't really do anything to us, fortunately. So let's just take a look at the hydrophones. Uh, we cannot take proper evasive action now uh, when they're damaged, so we will apply plus one modifier for escort and air attack. Uh, we can attempt to repair if we manage to escape from this combat. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and roll for escort detection again, and I am gonna exceed test depth and roll for that. And I roll a nine, so we're good. So now I'm rolling for escort detection. And a roll of five, so I actually think we made it out alive, guys. Let's look at our escort detection. Okay, so I roll the five. That's gonna be a six with this modifier. It's gonna be a seven with this modifier. And then it's gonna be a six with the exceeding test depth. So we definitely have an eight or less. We have managed to escape from this. Uh, from this um, escort. Let's head back to our log sheet. So we have successfully marked up our kill here on 7100 tonnage. Again, sorry for my extremely bad handwriting. It's hard to stand up and write while there's a tripod in the way. We have damaged hydrophones, so we're gonna go ahead and roll to see if we can repair those. Those will be repaired on a roll of one to two with a D6. Unfortunately, they aren't. They're permanently damaged and we do an inoperable uh, marker on that. Another thing to note about convoys, which we just um, engaged, uh, one reason why I choose to engage one target is if you're lucky and destroy it in the first round and don't have to follow it, uh, you can then re-engage the convoy and you will roll for three new targets. So let's hope that happens later in the game when I have a lower dud ratio. Okay, anyway, we're gonna move on now to the third box of the Philippines, which is an X1. So I'm gonna go ahead and use D6 to keep track of that. Rolling two D6 to see what I encounter. And I roll an eight. And the Philippines, let's see, an eight is unfortunately nothing. So we do our second roll in this box. And we roll a seven. Let's see, a seven is in the Philippines, a ship plus an escort. There we have seven, ship plus escort. So let's roll first of all uh, for ship size. I am hoping for a five or a six. Yeah, so we have a big ship. And then we're gonna go ahead and roll to identify our targets. It's gonna be again roster A, number 93. So 93, that's gonna be, ah, oh, that's a bad one. Uh, Koyu Maru, uh, that's just 5,300 freighter. Do you hear the train? Uh, let's see, what's his name again? F. Koyu. 5,300 tonnage. Anyway, oops, sorry. Anyway, we're gonna go ahead and engage him. Anyway, we need to uh, gain some tonnage and hopefully kill three ships this, uh, this patrol to get the Bronze Star. So let's go to the left to our combat mat. Okay, so we're preparing for combat. We have a large passenger yet again uh, with 5,300 tonnage. So he's gonna have three hit points. We have an escort 
and we'll start by rolling for time of day. It's night time. Very nice. And you can guess how I'm going to go ahead and engage this guy. I'm going to go ahead and engage while submerged at night uh, at medium range with four MK14 uh, torpedoes. So let's roll 2d6, seven or lower to hit. The first one is a hit. Second one is a miss. Third one is also a miss, unfortunately. And the last one is also a miss. So we have only one hit and it is not a dud. Let's see what kind of damage it does. Five. So that's just going to be one damage. So he's taking one damage, this guy, and we now need to do our escort detection. And I'm going to go ahead and take one whole damage, uh, doing exceeding test depth, and I'm okay. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and roll for escort detection. I need to roll, uh, I believe, on eight or lower to uh, escape. And a roll of five, so I'm good to go. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and follow this ship, which we do automatically since he's damaged. But we're gonna roll to see if he's still under escort or not, which will be on a one to four. He will be still escorted. Ah, oh, these dice. And we roll a three, so he's still under escort. That's fine by me. We're gonna go ahead and use the same tactic again. Launching four uh, torpedoes at medium range seven or lower to hit so the first one is a hit the second one is also a hit God damn it. sorry for cursing or for using the lord's name in vain third one is also a hit and then the first sorry the third one is a miss and the fourth is a hit so we actually have uh, four hits that's pretty decent so let's roll for duds and we have one dud only, so that's pretty uh, nice. We know uh, again that um, uh, that we can get one damage at least from every um, every uh, torpedo that is a hit, and I have two confirmed hits, so this guy is uh, done for. We don't have to roll for damage, uh, but what we do have to do now is roll for escort detection again, unfortunately. And you know me, guys. I'm gonna go ahead and roll for t exceeding test depth. Oh no. <laughs> okay, that has never happened before. Uh, I exceed the test depth now, and that is actually from from every time I play this game, the Hunter's uh, Silent Victory. I've never ever been sunk by exceeding test depth but it has happened for the first time guys i just got sunk by myself i rolled a two and that is the only um, thing that could uh, kill me because if i would have rolled a three i would have just taken one damage and rolled again but i did uh, roll lower than my total damage so that means i've been sunk Oh, okay, let's go back to our log sheet and see how we did. Okay, so we did uh, we did get this uh, large freighter, uh, and we have previously sunk two thousand uh, or so, sorry twenty four thousand nine hundred, and plus seven thousand one hundred plus five thousand three hundred. That's gonna be thirty seven thousand three hundred tonnage. I'm just gonna mark your sign. Uh, and basically that means we were very close to a victory, unfortunately. We'll look here uh, on page number six on determining victory level. Uh, and we go, we'll see here, uh, draw is 10,000 to 39,999 tons sunk. And we sank 37,300, so very close to a marginal victory. But we get a draw. You have fulfilled your obligations to the nation. You are quietly reassigned to the torpedo detonator design facility in Washington. And it seems like they need some good people over there because, because of all of these duds. So unfortunately guys, my uh, campaign is cut short. 
I've done, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five patrols sunk on the fifth, ships sunk, one, two, three, four, five, so not very good, five only, and my total tonnage again is 37,300. So unfortunately guys, uh, I was hoping for a victory here, uh, this porpoise uh, is kind of fun as well, because in October 44 you can upgrade the porpoise to a Baloa class, and that is a very much more powerful submarine. So I was hoping for that, but maybe next time, guys, uh, I'm going to do more videos on this fantastic game. Uh, next one is going to be a Salmon class uh, submarine. Uh, and also stay tuned because I'm going to do more the Hunters videos once I have just, just need more time, uh, which is I, I like both of the games, but the Hunters is for me superior, uh, even though this is also a very good game. So again, uh, and as always, thank you for watching. Please subscribe, have a good time and see you soon.